Let us tell you a true story about the journey to become the world's eighth richest man. In 2018, who is also the first business empire that we unravel in travel and tourism. A story as fascinating as it is an unbelievable narrative, as compelling as it is plagued by personal tragedy and professional scandal. It begins as the story of a boy aged 12 selling newspapers on a street corner in South Boston, Massachusetts. After borrowing money from his uncle to get a license, his father, a Ukrainian Jew taxi driver, liked to gamble on almost anything. His grandfather was a Welsh coal miner and his mother ran a knitting shop. In 2017, he earned $11.4 billion. Today, he earns 33 million daily, 1.38 million an hour, 22.946 thousand dollars per minute. It is an empire both astronomically successful in its business endeavors and plagued by its negative political scandals and suggested links to globalized organized crime. History records two brothers from an underprivileged background of hardship and struggle that would start in the 1930s prohibition era of America. These times and environment shaping one of the brothers with such business acumen, visionary foresight, drive and single-minded strength. It would produce an unimaginable business dynasty that would influence the shaping of a continent. The selection of many powerful leaders in the West changed the framework of the gaming industry and influenced how scientists around the world would collaborate, making him the eighth richest man in the world. His name is Sheldon Gary Adelson, and he is the king of casinos. It was 1933, the end of the era of prohibition and the gangsterism that had controlled the supply and speakeasies and alcohol scattered throughout the United States of America. Boston, Massachusetts, one of the 13 original states, situated in the northeast corner of the US. The location where the Mayflower landed the pilgrims was a tough place with daily challenges of poverty and the darker sides of life where Catholic Irish, who had escaped the famine, lived side by side with immigrant Italians, Jews and Europeans. It was trapped within this environment that Arthur Adelson, a Ukrainian Jew with Lithuanian Jewish ancestry, a taxi driver whose main joy was to bet numbers, together with his wife Sarah Nee Tolkien, an immigrant from England who ran a knitting shop struggled on a low income to strive. On August 4th, 1933, they had the first of two sons, Sheldon Gary Adelson. Three years later, again in Boston, Suffolk, a second son who they named Leonard was born. The boys played the streets like any children of the time learning quickly that luck was made, not given. An opportunity was pursued, not waited for, driven, busy, interested and astute from an early age. Sheldon, older of the two, had the confirmed stamp of someone bent on improving his personal conditions, borrowing $10, which is now in 2018 over $102 then at 16 in 1948 to start a candy vending machine business. The young Sheldon Adelson attended trade school to become a court reporter, becoming a sonographer. His brother, meanwhile, dreamed of a job in the music industry. Sheldon joined the army, being stationed in Governor's Island, New York, for two years. He joined the City College of New York, but dropped out with less than average grades, as the entrepreneurial call to enterprise was too great. It was the start of a diligent pattern 
towards his future visions. That Sheldon Adelson would not only carry throughout his life, but an attribute that would make him one of the richest entrepreneurs in history, would cause an impact on global change and change the face of one of the most lucrative industries known to man. With cold clarity and ambitious energy, Sheldon capitalised on creating opportunities, establishing businesses, selling toiletry kits, a chemical spray to clear frozen windshields called de icy The early 1960s seeing him start a chartered tour business, he had soon become a millionaire. By the age of 30, having already built and lost a fortune twice. In the early 70s, Sheldon met and married his first wife, Sarah, and together they would adopt three children, Shelley, Gary and Mitchell. It was in these years, Sheldon Adelson, a man interested in many things, specifically the Zionist movement and helping the Jews in the state of Israel, formulated the first pivotal visionary idea that would secure and be instrumental in an empire that would in 2018 have a net worth of $39.8 billion. Together with partners, he developed the Comdex brand, the first computer trade show in 1979, an endeavor that would continue to be the premier computer trade show throughout the 1980s and 90s. Adelson and his partners selling the Interface Group show division to SoftBank Corporation of Japan in 1995 for 862 million. Sheldon Adelson's share of the sale being over 500 million dollars. Despite these brilliant and astute victories conquered in business, he would shoulder his necessary personal pain and tragedy. His marriage to Sandra, ending in divorce in 1988. Further family strife haunted in the form of a desperation to save his sons Michael and Gary of an increasing addiction to hard drugs like heroin and cocaine. With business foresight and with these emotional family weaknesses lingering in the background, Adelson had bought the Sands Hotel and Casino, former hangout to Frank Sinatra in 1988. He was reminded of his father's penchant for gambling and had applied these background memories and lessons into a concise business strategy in gaming. 1991 saw him demolish the hotel, a move instrumental to his vision of innovating the gaming industry, replacing the Sands with one of the first mega resorts in Las Vegas. In another part of the world, in Tel Aviv, Israel, another important piece of the forming Adelson Empire was moving to find its place. As Miriam Farbstein Oxhorn, a brilliant physician and biologist, who having started at the Israeli Laboratory for the Biology of Addictive Diseases, had gone on to medical school doing residency in internal medicine in Tel Aviv, graduating summa cum laude, the highest honor in microbiology and genetics from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Mother of two daughters, Yasmin, and younger sister Sivan, and who had moved to the United States in 1986, went on a blind date with Sheldon Gary Adelson, confirming her future destiny. The meeting of the gregarious, highly honorable, and academically gifted Dr. Miriam Oxon with the astute, driven, and business genius Sheldon would add the last needed steel to the foundations that would consolidate finishing touches to a growing global density that would touch the lives of millions of people daily. They were married a year later. 
And it was while they honeymooned in Venice that Sheldon Adelson received the inspiration for the Venetian, the Las Vegas Venice-themed resort hotel and casino, opened on May 3rd, 1999, setting the scene for a new gaming centre of five-star opulence. In 2003, the 1013 suite Venezia Tower was added, giving the hotel 4,049 suites, 18 restaurants and a shopping mall. With sharp, cold-eyed precision against all the odds, he had identified the luxury city mega casino resort business model that would dominate the market, changing industry norms and goals. The cooperation being worth more than all the other US companies in the industry behind him combined. In Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, late 2000, the gaming license for the planned casino resort was granted. The five-star casino opening in 2009. Its table games becoming operational in 2010 and the hotel opening in 2011. In May 2004, the Andelson dynasty opened the Sands Macau in Macau in China. It was to be the first Las Vegas casino in the People's Republic of China. In a Chinese gaming city, notoriously shadowy, utilitarian and underground, which had until 1999 been a Portuguese colony. The ever astute Sheldon Adelson took stock public December. This maneuver since multiplying his wealth more than 14 times. The force of the tempestuously successful Adelson business empire forged forward. Family tragedy, colouring glories won when on September 6th, 2005, Mitchell, his son from his first marriage, lost his life to a drugs overdose, leaving wife Lynn and three sons. The relationship between father and son before his death had been strained. Sheldon Adelson, realising his sons were not capable of managing and continuing the family empire, had bought shares back from them. Sheldon and Miriam, a specialist in the field of addiction, had exhausted every avenue to contain and cure their son's addiction, even being involved with treatments. Mitchell, who died, and his brother had filed a lawsuit against their father, claiming he had then sold the shares for much more than they had received. When the stark reality was that Adelson adults knowing the son's attributes did not equate to a future prospering growing empire or a healthy direction for the sons themselves. It was ascertained they were protected from themselves and given generous allowances. May 2006 saw another casino resort license secured to construct in Singapore's Marina Bay. The Marina Bay Sands would open at a cost of 5.5 billion, boasting the seventh biggest building in the world regarding floor space, exclusive stores, a convention center for Sands Live concert series, multiple swimming pools, nightclubs, and 2,500 opulent five-star hotel rooms. The young boy who had grown up in a South Boston ghetto, starting his first business venture, understood well also the controlling and manipulating power of the media. Co-founding the paper Israeli, the first edition of his newspaper Israeli Hayon, being published on July 30th, 2007. Then on 2014, Addison received the go-ahead 
from a Jerusalem call to purchase Mariv. And the conservative newspaper, Makar Rishon. A TGI survey puts Israeli Hayom, a free newspaper, the number one daily paper on weekdays, four years after its inception. A further consolidation of media power was launched in America, as in December 2015, Sheldon Adelson bought the Las Vegas Review Journal. It is very apparent along the way in his meteoric rise to astronomical success. Sheldon Adelson has become highly skilled in the tools of control and manipulation in the global and sovereign context. A public and ardent Zionist, the two imperative drives of his philanthropy being birthright Israel, financing youth trips to the tune of 140 million and other various Israeli Jewish causes funded, like Yad Vashem, Holocaust, Martyrs and Heroes Remembrance Authority, who received 25 million also. The second imperative, the private Dr. Miriam and Sheldon G. Adelson Medical Research Foundation, a serious foundation which tackles high-level diseases like cancers and which in its administrative life has fundamentally changed the way scientists collaborate and share information. This wonderful work in a needed area sees 200 million annually of Adelson Empire money donated. Dr. Miriam Adelson, a champion of the underdog and suffering, who has taken a leading role in the Adelson dynasty philanthropic endeavors, throwing many millions into the treatments and research of drug abuse. Targeting also any committees trying to legalize cannabis which Sheldon calls a gateway drug, voicing its contribution to his son's journey into addiction. As good works could be shown on one side, the Adelson business empire has constantly been shadowed by scandal, highlighting unsavory practices and unremitting tragedies. The Israeli Channel 10 alleging he acquired a casino license in Las Vegas inappropriately through his political connections. The modern years have seen his business empire take full salvos, main accusations being long and deep ties with the Chinese Mafia and the American La Cosa Nostra. Labelling his business creations corrupt and one of the most dangerous American oligarchs, unleashing a criminal probe into his casino empire amidst unease about the earning power, influence on government and connections to organized crime families around the world. A clear fact is that Sheldon Adelson is well used to leveraging his wealth to steer the politics of the day. Saying on the 2012 campaign to Barack Obama that he would do whatever it took to see him defeated. Adelson quoted as saying, I don't cry when I lose. There's always a new hand coming up. Recorded in the same year, his donations to various Republican interests, a figure totaling nearly a hundred million. What is certain is that the march of the Adelson dynasty shall continue. When one considers amongst his grand and remarkable accomplishments, the web of intricately placed and powerful allies and affiliates, Donald Trump, an old associate who received a 40 million donation in the run up to his election to President of the United States being just one 
And when one comprehends the future scale and changing infrastructure of China, the most powerfully emerging nation on earth, working diligently as we commune on a high speed rail link to Maku and further bridge developments to connect Maku to Hong Kong and Zhuhai. It would appear that for the 84 year old Sheldon Adelson, king of casinos, the boy who started selling newspapers on a street corner, shaping himself into one of the most wealthiest and powerful entrepreneurs on the planet, and who along the way on his business career has formed more than 50 companies. The show is sure to continue. I am Stephen Gillen. We are the top nine world's elite stories. And let us finish by showing you the top nine methods and strategies that have saw the emergence of Sheldon Gary Adelson, founder of the Adelson Business Empire, to a 39.8 billion global fortune. Number one, learn from and apply the lessons from your past adversities. Like the young Adelson boy from a Boston ghetto who watched a father's penchant for gaming. Number two, dedicate every waking moment to improving your conditions. Like the young man becoming a millionaire by age 30. Number three, sacrifice all in your pursuit of greatness. Like the entrepreneur who was willing to risk 5.5 billion on his dream venture. Number four, dedicate a life of obsessive persistence to obtaining your goals. Like Sheldon Adelson, building company after company. Number five, learn the proven tools of control and manipulation. Like a top statesman at the height of his powers. Number six, buy and coerce powerful allies to aid you in your cause, using your immense wealth to leverage influence. Number seven, pick a lucrative business niche, linked to human addiction and refine it. Number eight, show dominating innovation and leadership, quickly monopolizing your industry, risking it all like Adelson in his luxury city mega casino resort business model. Number nine, create a web of allies and affiliates so intricately linked to your empire that the foundations will always protect you. Like the boy from Boston who became so powerful he helped shape a continent, influencing the appointment of United States presidents. We are Top 9 World's Elite Stories. Make sure to subscribe for more if you're new to our channel and share and give a thumbs up for more fascinating and entertaining content as we give you the secrets, histories, methods and strategies of the world's top business empires in the top nine industries.